everyone, and welcome to the first episode of our podcast series, Everything You Need to Know as a Board Member or Economist in a Central Bank with a State-of-the-Art FPAS Mark II Framework. I'm Anahit Jaloyan, a Level 1 student at the Global Forecasting School and an economist at the Central Bank of Armenia. In this series, we'll dive into essential principles, frameworks, and approaches that every central banker and economist should understand. Today, we're starting with the foundational elements of policy predictability, transparency, and the prudent risk management approach. Joining me is Narek Azarian, a board member at the Central Bank of Armenia, who will shed light on these crucial concepts. Thank you for joining us, Narek. Thank you, Anahit. It's a pleasure to be here. These principles are vital for any central banker or economist aiming to contribute effectively within an advanced policy framework. Let's start with the big picture, Narek. Why is policy predictability so important for central banks? Predictability is key because it builds trust and stability. When central banks are predictable, markets, businesses and the public can better anticipate our responses to economic changes, allowing them to adjust more smoothly and in a timely manner. This reduces uncertainty, which in turn makes monetary policy more effective. A predictable central bank also helps avoid sudden market overreactions to policy changes, which can amplify volatility. When we're consistent in our actions and clear about our policy objectives, we reinforce the credibility of our commitment to long-term goals like inflation control and economic stability. That's a great foundation. There is often some confusion about the difference between monetary policy and the instruments used to implement it. Could you clarify this? Certainly. Monetary policy is the overarching strategy that guides the central bank's long-term goals, such as maintaining price stability and supporting economic growth. It's a framework that helps us navigate toward these goals systematically over time. Monetary policy instruments, on the other hand, are the specific tools we use to achieve these goals, such as setting the policy rate. By systematically adjusting these instruments based on our strategic framework, we enhance predictability and allow the markets to better anticipate our actions. So the instruments are the tools, and policy is the roadmap guiding when and how to use them. How does the prudent risk management approach fit into all of this? The prudent risk management approach is about planning for a range of possible futures, rather than betting on one likely scenario. This approach means we're transparent about the range of risks we consider and the conditions that might trigger different responses. By openly communicating these scenarios, we allow markets to adjust their expectations more proactively, making financial adjustments smoother and more aligned with our objectives. Transparency here doesn't mean we reveal every detail, but it means we provide clarity on the rationale and potential responses in different scenarios. It's a way to communicate our decision-making framework, not just individual decisions, which strengthens market understanding and reduces uncertainty. An interesting example of how this approach could have been helpful is the summer of 2021. At that time, many central banks considered inflation transitory, but economist Larry Summers raised concerns about inflation potentially being more persistent. What might have been different if central banks had applied a prudent risk management approach? That's a great example, Anahit. If central banks had communicated multiple scenarios, including one where inflation was more persistent, markets could have been better prepared. By sharing the possibility of higher interest rates if inflation didn't ease, markets might have adjusted more proactively, preventing a buildup in inflation expectations. In this case, a prudent risk management approach would have allowed central banks to signal the potential for higher rates without making abrupt, unexpected changes which can destabilize markets. This approach emphasizes the importance of transparent, scenario-based planning and communication, especially when facing high uncertainty. That really highlights the importance of being transparent, not only about the actions, but also about the framework guiding those actions. Before we finish, could you share a bit about the scholarship opportunities offered by the Better Policy Project for GFS? Of course. The Better Policy Project offers two annual scholarships for the GFS program, covering the program fee. This is an incredible opportunity for those who are committed to advancing their skills in economic policy, and it's open to candidates who are willing to engage in our rigorous, dynamic learning environment. Applications are reviewed monthly, 
with an interview and testing process to assess each candidate's suitability for our program's unique approach. Thank you, Narek, for sharing these foundational principles and the scholarship information. And to our listeners, if you'd like to support the Better Policy Project and the Global Forecasting School's mission to improve economic and financial literacy, please subscribe to this podcast and hit the like button. Join us next time as we continue this series with a deep dive into more essential concepts for central bankers. Thank you all and see you next time.